Hey there, Python trainer Ruven Lerner here. And today I want to do something a little different from my usual videos. Today I want to talk to you about the five mistakes companies make teaching Python. I do corporate training just about every day. I'm in companies all around the world, either in person or online teaching Python. And I see companies make the same mistakes again and again. I don't want you and your company to make these mistakes. So let's go through some of them. By the way, I'm sure there are more than five mistakes, but these are the big ones that I see. So number one, the first biggest mistake that I see people make is our people already know C or Java or C sharp or whatever it is. So Python is easy. So they don't really need to learn it. This is nonsense. <laughs> That's like saying, well, you already know English and Spanish is kind of like English just with a few different vowels put in different places. So like, we'll just give you a dictionary and you'll be fine. No, no, that is not the way it works. Python and Java and C are different languages. Not only do they have different syntax, but they have different ways of thinking about things. When I say, if I'm in C and I say X equals five, and I guess I'll put on the semicolon there, that means take the integer five and put it in a memory location that is alias to the value, uh, the variable X. That's say X is a location in memory. And so when I say X equals five, I'm sticking something in that location. In Python though, it works differently. When I say X equals five, I am not sticking the number five into a memory location. Rather, it's a reference, or dare I use the obscene word, a pointer. It's a reference from the name X to the value five, the integer value five. At no time are values stored in explicit memory locations in Python. I mean, at least not that we can get to. And at no time are variables associated with specific memory locations. That just does not happen. And this is like the first tip of the iceberg where it is different and where understanding the differences between Python and these other languages is crucial. Understanding how Python works as opposed to how you can sort of kind of write these other languages in Python is important. I often say that I, I encounter this all the time. I see people writing Python in a heavy Java accent, right? Like it works, which is better than not working, but it's just weird, does not follow the idioms. And part of learning Python is not just learning the syntax, it's learning how to think in Python. It's learning how to use the core data structures, how to use functions, how to use loops in the ways that the language makes it natural. If you've ever learned a foreign language and you use your native languages idioms in that foreign language and you get funny looks, that's the sort of thing that awaits you if you don't actually learn Python. Okay, mistake number two is, We'll just have them read a book or watch a Udemy course. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> just don't do that because the odds are they will not actually read the book. The odds are they will not actually view the course. Moreover, even if they do, it's much harder to learn something, to learn anything just by watching a video. Well, except this particular video you're watching, right? To watch a video or read a book. You need interactions. You need to be able to ask questions. You need to practice. I'm going to get to all those in just a moment. But just watching or reading these things, it's so easy to go, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Pretend that you know it. Think that you know it. Believe that you know it, but not really know it. You need to test yourself. You need to practice. And that's where thing number three comes in. You must include practice exercises. I have definitely had clients over the years where they have said, well, you know, we're kind of pressed for time, so let's just not do the exercises. That is a really bad idea. People need to practice. They need to make mistakes. Do you want them making mistakes when they use Python on the job at work? No, you probably want them to make mistakes on exercises in class so they will learn so that when they get to the actual thing at their jobs, they will not make those mistakes, right? Don't use your work as an experimental laboratory for someone's Python, you know, someone's Python playground there. You want them to know it or at least know it better before they go in. Practice is crucial. Exercises are crucial. And that's why they're part of, well, every course that I do, both in person and online, I don't understand how you can do it any other way. Here's another mistake people made. Load up the syllabus with lots of content. And this goes hand in hand with another thing that I often see uh, uh, from companies. Companies say, you know what? I know that course usually takes four days, but our people are super smart. You can probably do it in two or three, right? Now I do talk fast, I recognize that. 
But that's not the way learning works. That's not the way training works. That's not the way the human mind works. For me to just talk faster will not work. And for us to cut out the exercises will not work. And for me, let's just throw lots of content in there. Again, people will go, uh-huh, 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 at best. And then they will forget it right away. I know this from experience. The first time that I ever taught Python at a company, it was a two-day course. And I taught core data structures and loops and comprehensions and objects and regular expressions and modules and packages. And I think I threw in a few other things for good measure also. There is no way on God's great earth people in that course learned anything serious, except that maybe they enjoyed Python and they wanted to actually take a course in it now and get a deeper understanding. It was such a quick overview of the topics without giving examples, without giving exercises, without giving people a chance to ask questions. It really wasn't worth what, what it should have been. Um, every year, every year, I actually remove content from my courses because I want to have time to go into the ideas in depth. I want people to be asked questions, interact, talk, find out what's really going on, and for us to explore and to make mistakes. Really, there's no getting around the making mistakes. And number five, which I have, of course, you know, talked about already here, is no exercise. Oh, I already did the exercises. Haha, <laughs> see? See, I should have practiced that more, right? So, the, the final one mistake that people make is they think people need to know a ton to do something with Python. They don't. The Python language is amazing in many, many ways. It goes really deep. It has all sorts of amazing features. Most people don't need most of those features. When I teach people who are going to be doing data analysis, do data analysts really need to understand object-oriented programming? Most of the time, they don't. Will it help? Sure. But if we have to choose and make trade-offs, no, it's not that important. But it gets better or worse, depending on how you want to look at it. Many times when I'm teaching an advanced course, companies expect me to teach something like meta classes. And, and almost always, no, not almost always, always, as I'm going through the whole thing about meta classes, which are really complex and really arcane, someone will say, am I ever going to really need this? And the answer is no. Don't think that just because a topic is advanced or a topic is interesting, that a topic is necessary, right? Teach people what they need. Teach people the things that they're going to use on a day-to-day -day basis and teach people the terminology that they'll need in order to read the documentation and understand it. Because even the best course can never teach everything to everyone that they will need. They will encounter issues and problems and topics that they'll need to look up in the documentation and understanding how the documentation thinks and talks and its vocabulary will help them along those ways. Again, these are not the only mistakes that people make, that companies make in teaching Python, but they are some of the big ones that I see and that I hear when companies call me asking to do corporate training or when I actually get there and we end up doing some last minute negotiation. I will say that training is fun, exciting, interesting, both for the trainer and if done well, for the participants. It's a, a breath of fresh air and it gives you a chance to really understand how things work rather than just you know, learning syntax, which is boring as all get out. All right, I hope that this slightly unusual, but fun for me, uh, close to home video was useful and interesting. If you have questions, if you have feedback, if you have comments, leave them here. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll be back very soon with lots more on Python and Pandas.